Hello, this is Alex on Pangio Techno Valley Weekly News. Here's the news from the third week of November. First up, Neighbor to kick off the view on November 24th. Neighbor announced on November 8th that it will hold the biggest conference in South Korea for developers. DView 2021 on November 24th online. The three-day conference marks its 14th anniversary this year. This year's conference will share the experience and know-how of Neighbor's developers who are expanding the company's presence on the global stage based on Naver Labs Europe, Z Holdings Corporation, and Global AI R&D Belt. The conference will cover various technologies including back-end, mobile, cloud, and machine learning, hyperscale AI, and the metaverse, with 116 sessions more than any time before. Live booths of Naver's technology divisions will be open to hold meetups for developers and for online employment consulting. Every session, including the keynote speeches, are available on DView's website and Neighbor TV. For our second story, Wadiz to attract a 100 billion Series D investment. Wadiz has successfully attracted a Series D investment worth 100 billion won. It is planning to expand into a comprehensive funding platform for startups and SMEs through the Lotte Group's help, which participated in the investment as a strategic investor. Watt is announced on the 10th that it attracted a total of 100 billion won worth of Series D investment from Lotte Corporation and the Korea Development Bank. Lotte Corporation made investments worth 80 billion won. It hopes to work with what is using infrastructure it already has in various fields including food, distribution, manufacturing, finance, logistics, and other services. Wadiz has received a total investment of 147.5 billion won. Wadiz has paved the way for a Series D investment in two years and six months since it attracted 3.1 billion won in Series C investments, where Shinon Venture Investment, DS Asset Management, Korea Investment Partners, and Smilegate Investment took part in May 2019. Wadiz is planning to spend the money on expansion in the financial sector, providing marketing support for participating startups and advancing the Wadiz platform. For a third story, Hancom Group to launch new businesses at CES. Hancom Group is planning to open various new businesses including satellites, the metaverse, and blockchain businesses at CES 2022. The International Electronic Product Exhibition that's being held in January of next year in Las Vegas. The group said on November 11th that it will focus on new businesses at CES 2022 with around 100 staff. Hancom in Space, the group's aerospace subsidiary, is drawing attention with its plan for its exhibition of the Sejong 1 Ho, an Earth observation optical satellite that's scheduled to launch in the first half of next year. The satellite is a low orbit small satellite which collects video data from 500 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Hong Kong in Space is planning to launch a series of Sejong satellites with Sejong 5 Ho being the last one. Sejong 2 Ho is expected to launch in the second half of next year. At the exhibition, the group will showcase a reconnaissance drone, HD 500, which was revealed in September of this year. At the opening, the group announced special purpose drones with various purposes, including education, agriculture, national defense, and industry that will be launched. In addition, Hong Kong Group will reveal the work of its other businesses, including its blockchain and metaverse businesses at CES. Hong Kong Group's blockchain business is spearheaded by Arowana Project. The blockchain businesses include Arowana Octasign and a gold trading digital platform, Arowana Goldmore. Arowana Project is aimed to establish an ecosystem for distributing and trading gold. The project aims to build a blockchain-based platform that makes it easy for individuals and businesses to trade gold. And finally, NHN to provide AI supervisor solutions for Army Human Resources Command. NHN will apply AI technology to create a smart talent pool management system for Army Human Resources Command. NHN announced on the 10th that it signed an MOU with Army Human Resources Command and Recruitment to provide AI supervisor solution technology for the creation of a smart talent pool management of Army Human Resources Command. This agreement would be implemented as part of a successful digital transformation in Army Human Resources Command. 
and its aim is to improve the existing system as well as improving evaluation of the MZ generation applicants to the Army who are more used to the digital environment. Discussion is underway to introduce services from paperless applications to chatbot consulting in the selection process of chief officials in the future. NHM provides AI technology and solutions based on which an online essay exam is conducted at the Republic of Korea Army headquarters. Facial recognition is also used to prevent cheating. It even uses eye tracking. An AI supervisor analyzes applicants' facial expressions, body movements, and noises using a front-facing remote camera when conducting an exam. When cheating or abnormal behavior is detected, it automatically collects suspicious sections and analyzes them later. NHN has been recognized for its credibility and accuracy by ensuring fairness through detecting various forms of cheating in real time with an AI supervisor that it introduced for an open recruitment of entry-level developers last year. And now it's time for the quick news of the week. Our first quick news bite, Pangyo Startup Campus to kick off Go Global Day on November 18th. Gyeonggi-do Business and Science Accelerator and Sinova Asia announced the kickoff of Go Global Day at Pangyo Startup Campus on November 18th. The event was formed to promote the global competitiveness of startups and establish a model for mutually beneficial cooperation among middle market enterprises and large companies. This event will be held online and be open to all startups. For our next story, D2SF to move to bigger office and more investment in startups. Neighbors D2 startup factory D2SF, an organization to nurture technology startups, announced on November 12th that it will move to a bigger office and accelerate investment in technology startups. Our third quick news story, Krafton's quarterly sales hit historic high. Krafton has recorded the historic high quarterly sales for this year. The game company announced on November 11th that it hit 521.9 billion Korean won for sales with a 195.3 billion won operating profit and 178.3 billion won net income based on its consolidated financial statement for the third quarter of this year. And that's it for the Pongo Techno Valley Weekly News. My name is Alex Sigurist, and I will see you next time.